Well, the magnetic field of the Earth is a bit of a sticking point for flat Earthers. I have already done a few videos about how the Curie temperature rhetoric is irrelevant and how the field we measure from a single bar magnet is actually pretty close to what we observe with the Earth's magnetic field. Of course, it is not exact because the mechanism that creates the Earth's magnetic field is slightly different, hence the Curie temperature being irrelevant. But I figured out that I would take a slightly different approach and rather than explore what the magnetic field actually looks like in reality, I would explore what it would have to look like on a flat Earth. First, let's have a look at what the field looks like on the surface of the Earth if it is spherical. And here it is if it were a flat plane. So here we have the field in the center going down, which is what you would measure at the North Pole. And at the edges, the field points up, which is what you would measure at the South Pole. At the equator, the field is parallel to the surface. But let's have a look at some possible sources that could produce this field. The first instinct would be to say that the Earth's magnetic field on a flat Earth is caused by a magnetic monopole at the North Pole. Now, this is very silly. Ignoring the fact that magnetic monopoles do not exist, as far as we know, this has many other problems. Firstly, we have the inverse square law. The magnetic field strength would decrease by the inverse of the distance from the North Pole squared. This would be most noticeable in the Northern Hemisphere, as the magnetic field strength at the 60 degree line of latitude would be half the strength of the field at the 75 degree line of latitude. At the 30 degree line, it would be half of that at the 60 degree line of latitude. Secondly, the dip in the magnetic field cannot be explained by this. In the case of a magnetic monopole, the Earth's magnetic field would always be parallel to the Earth's surface, and we can measure the field to conclude that this is simply not true. So clearly, a magnetic monopole is not feasible. So then I thought about ring magnets, and these things come in various types and sizes. The closest thing that I could think of is a radially magnetized ring magnet where the ring sits on the equator. The problem with this is that the magnetic field is not uniform. Again, okay, the field lines point towards the center where the North Pole would be, but something interesting happens on the inside of the ring the field starts getting cancelled out. As a result, we should notice a dramatic decrease in the magnetic field with latitude in the northern hemisphere. In addition, these types of magnets are a bitch to form as they are generally very high in energy. These things don't occur naturally. Having considered the different types of magnets, I realized that the macroscopic textures don't really do it. So maybe we can borrow from some microscopic textures and this may do the trick. Enter the skirmion. Skirmions are interesting things. They are circular regions in a magnetic material where the directions of the spins do a complete 360 degree turn along the radial axis. The type of skirmion that we are interested in is the hedgehog skirmion, where the magnetization points up or down in the center and opposite direction at the edges. Here is a simulation showing the structure, and I'll slice through it so you can see the magnetization through the cross section. Each arrow represents the average magnetization of a small group of spins in a material. I will now run it again but in such a way that you can see the spins in each slice side on. Looking at this, this appears to be promising. We have magnetization pointing one way in the center and the opposite direction at the edges. And there's a gradual transition when going out along the radial axis. But let's have a look at what kind of magnetic field we can expect from this thing. So here I have a single cross section of a hedgehog skirmion going through the center so we can have a nice two dimensional representation. We have the red and blue bits which indicate the individual spins and the black arrows which indicate the field direction. We then have the squiggly iso lines which indicate all points in which the magnetic field strength is equal. 
we have a field which kind of points up at the edges and down in the center. And when we annotate this with some lines indicating north and south pole, we see that the field directions are roughly consistent with what we observe on Earth. Great. This means that we have something that could explain the magnetic field on a flat Earth. But there are a few problems. Firstly, these things are small very small. The largest experimentally realized skirmion is around 15 nanometers in diameter. These things are also pretty unstable and tend to relax into another state called the vortex state. The vortex state has complete flux closure, so there is no magnetic field outside of the disk, apart from the little bit in the center. But don't worry, these things are pretty unstable as well when you get to bigger systems. The energy density that is associated with a skirmion is around 90 kilojoules per cubic meter. The vortex state is 1 20th of that. Guess which law of thermodynamics states that the vortex state is preferred? Now, ignoring that, for one of these things to be responsible for the magnetic field on Earth, we would need a big-ass magnetic disk with a radius the same as the crazy pancake land. And to add a bit more, this disk would have to be a single perfect crystal with zero defects. And guess which physical law states that this is pretty much impossible. So no, sorry flat earthers, the magnetic field that we measured is just more evidence that the Earth is not flat.